that Doug, you wrote a book called Reformed is Not Enough. And somebody writes in with a question uh, about right. a quote from that book. So here's the quote. The means by which men apostatize from the covenant is unfaithfulness. The means by which men persevere in the covenant is faithfulness. In other words, to assert that men fall away because their salvation was contingent upon continued faithfulness in the gospel is not to deny the sovereignty of God at all. Right. And somebody writes in to say basically what gives. Okay. So um, this particular quote was uh, resurrected by someone and, and trotted out on Twitter. And there was a long Twitter, um, what, do you, what would Dr. Seuss call it? A Twitter bitter be beetle battle paddle. <laughs> paddle battle? <laughs> paddle. There, was a, uh, there was a ruckus. There was a ruckus on Twitter over this okay. quote. And as a, as a result of that, I went back to the, that chapter. I, I looked at uh, what I was saying. And it was in the chapter on apostasy. And it, at the tail end of that quote, it says, uh, to have it contingent on faithfulness and unfaithfulness is not inconsistent with, I'm not saying it's not inconsistent with sola fide, mm -hmm. I'm talking about God's sovereignty. So, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm the, the, that's the first thing. God's sovereignty uses means. So why did, why did um, this fellow die? Well, he died because God willed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, God's sovereignty. He also died because someone shot him in the head. Okay, that's a secondary cause. Mm -hmm. The secondary cause is not inconsistent with the sovereignty of God. Okay. Okay, so the unfaithfulness that someone exhibits when they fall away, when they apostatize, is not inconsistent with God's decree that he would do so. Right. Okay, okay that, so that's what I was talking about immediately there. Um, now, w with the faithfulness and unfaithfulness, if you, if you go back um, in the, earlier in the chapter, um, faithfulness is that which is full of faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So the, one of the weirdest things about this whole dispute is me being accused of denying sola fide because I say that faith is everything. <laughs> right. Well, it makes no, that uh -huh. makes no sense. Uh, so the saving faith, um, by grace you save through faith, and that not of yourselves. That faith is not even of your generating. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. When God gives a person faith, that person um, takes, receives that faith, all of a sudden he finds himself believing. Mm -hmm. And it's a God-given faith. They look at their sin and repent because of the faith, and they turn to Christ, which is faith. It's repent and believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I understand um, uh, the same living faith turns away from sin and turns toward Christ in the same motion. Mm -hmm. So if I turned away from that wall, I'd be simultaneously turning toward this wall. Right. If Christ is here and sin is there, I'm turning away from sin into Christ. And mm -hmm. I do that as a result of God-given faith. Okay. okay, And only faith. Nothing, no works of my own, no gritting my teeth and doing anything, no pedal harder, no, no mm -hmm. works. Um, and even that faith is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. Now, I don't believe that living faith, saving faith, goes out of existence the moment I'm justified. So when, when I believe, believe in Christ, God uses the faith as the instrument mm -hmm. of my justification and Christ's righteousness, his active obedience, that his obedience throughout his entire life, and his passive obedience on the cross, mm -hmm. all of that is imputed to me mm -hmm. using the instrumentality of my faith at that punctiliar moment right. of my justification. Okay, So uh, this person is forensically declared righteous by God mm -hmm. on the basis of faith alone. Okay? okay, Now, when that happens, we don't then say, okay, I'm glad that's done. Right. Okay, because the faith that God gave me to believe to the saving of my soul. The, the gave, he gave me to believe to the end result of justification doesn't go away. It doesn't go out of existence. Right. It continues. So faith is the instrument of my justification, which is punctiliar mm -hmm. and at the moment of my conversion. Faith is also the instrument of sanctification. Right. Okay. Because in Romans 1, where it says, um, 
the just shall live by faith. He's quoting Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, quote, he's quoting Habakkuk 2, the just shall live by his faith. And Romans 1, he says, the just shall live by faith. And then uh, we are to live by faith from first to last. All right, so, so we begin by faith, we continue by faith, we finish the race by faith. Mm -hmm. Everything is by faith from first to last. Now, whenever we sin, okay, mm -hmm. it's because we're not trusting, we're not believing. When we're walking in the light, we're walking in the light because of faith. So there's nothing good, it, and so Paul says elsewhere in Romans, what, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So um, the only way to stay out of sin is by trusting God, trusting Christ, trusting Him for justification and trusting Him for sanctification. Now, when let's say it's a year after the guy's converted mm -hmm. and he's had a bad week where he's, sin, he's committed various sins, he's, mm -hmm. not, he's not been walking by faith very well with regard to his sanctification. His poor showing in that week, his faithlessness during that week does not unravel or undo his justification. Right. It, it can't. Okay. But, but um, in the, you're describing here basically the perseverance by faith right. that, that we ought to have, a perseverance in obedience, but that comes from the root of faith right. throughout. In the, in the quote here, you're describing um, a hypothetical apostasy. Yeah. Um, and so that, um, how does what you describe um, make room for... Real apostasy. Uh, uh, that apostasy, because if that faith is a God-given faith, uh, it's right. a persevering faith. Right. Um, and if it is, then what is the apostasy? So, the, the, and, and this is the thing that has certain people uh, muddled who are trying to do theology on Twitter, and the, <laughs> <laughs> which is unsurprising. Uh, unsurprising, yeah. but but this is the this is the thing that's got them hung up, uh, and that is I I believe the people who are faithless and fall away from the covenant mm -hmm. are thereby revealing that they were never truly converted. Okay. Okay, so John says this, the certain people went out from us and that demonstrated that they were never really of us. Right. Okay, so, um, and I make that clear earlier in that chapter uh -huh. where um, if a person is faithless and falls away, the person who falls away is a non-elect covenant member, okay. a non-elect member of the visible church. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when he falls away, he is demonstrating that he never had the root of the matter in him at all. Mm -hmm. Because if he did have the root of the matter in him, mm -hmm. his poor showing, um, his faith, relative faithlessness in a bad week that he had later on mm -hmm. would not be able to undo right. the imputed righteousness of Christ, which is perfect and done. Okay. So the only okay. people who fall away are non-elect members of the visible church. Mm -hmm. They have some sort of connection to Christ mm -hmm. because they're baptized and they're in the church and you, right. you had to excommunicate them. Yeah. But they they were they didn't have the root of the matter in them at all. So, but what you just described to me sounds like classic standard Reformed theology. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. what I've been maintaining. <laughs> sure, but but if I could play devil's devil's yeah. advocate here a little bit, um, if it is standard Reformed theology, the the title of the book was Reformed is not enough. That right. there was some sense in which you were trying to. Um, um, flesh this out more, or w what was the motivation in, in okay, so the, going that direction? Um, I, I had this uh, interaction one time about the title of the book with R.C. Jr. So mm -hmm. R.C. Sproul Jr. Uh, raises the same question. What you okay. called the book, Reformed is Not Enough. And I, s I said, well, go back and look at the title. And this is, um, it's scare quotes, Reformed okay. is not enough. Got it. So, so yeah. um, now, in retrospect, I think I should have anticipated that lots of people wouldn't see those quotation marks. Got it. Right? Yeah. So if, if you said, um, hey, Doug, do you, would, you, would you consider renaming that book? Or do you think, uh, yeah, I think some people were misled because I think they, th they thought that I was rejecting full orb reform theology. I wasn't. What I was mm -hmm. doing, which you'll find in that book, is a detailed defense of an explication of Westminsterian theology 
So I'm, I'm reformed top to bottom, front to back, side to side. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm in the reformed tradition and I'm squarely in the reformed tradition. What I'm the, so what is the quote unquote, mm -hmm. what's the scare quote reformed that's not enough? Well, that would be, um, I, I would call them Bapterians, uh, okay. people, uh, people who belong to Presbyterian denominations that hold to the Westminster standards confessionally, mm -hmm. but for all intents and purposes have a Baptist understanding of soteriology slash ecclesiology. Uh -huh. Now, I think that Bapti uh, Reformed Baptists and Reformed Presbyterians who are evangelical mm -hmm. do share soteriology. There, yeah. Our soteriology is the same. But uh, the fact that we baptize babies and they don't means that you we have to have some sort of difference of uh, yeah. opinion on ecclesiology. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a friend of mine said basically the whole the, that whole uproar was all about children. Yeah. It was all about babies. Mm -hmm. um, and it was um, paid a baptism, paid a communion. The flashpoint that made this what it was um, the controversy that just keeps on giving, I think, was ha had to do with the position of children, covenant children in the covenant, mm -hmm. and Reformed Baptists sidestep that whole problem. Right? They right. just they don't have to worry about uh, what to do with children in the covenant because we don't have any. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Right. No, or that we have children, but they're children who come in the same way an adult does. They're 12 years old. Yep. They make a profession of faith. And so we receive, they, they don't have the ecclesi ecclesiological challenge. We have the, the, ecclesi uh, the ecclesiological challenge mm -hmm. because we baptize babies and we're evangelical. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the thing that some people can't get their minds around. Got it.